Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at email and password sign up slash sign in with Flutter and Firebase. And we're gonna use this example app that I put out there on GitHub. Uh, you do not uh, need to get the repo if you don't want to. You can just follow along with the, uh, the flow of the video. Uh, but if you do, I'm going to put the link down below. Uh, if you want to run it, there's one prerequisite video, so I'll put a link up there. Uh, really, you just need to create a Firebase project and link it to this app uh, so that you have your own uh, back end for it. So for starters, I'm just going to visit the uh, Firebase console, and I'm going to do the necessary uh, remaining setup for being able to authenticate with uh, email and password. And I'm going to run through what the app does. We're just going to walk it through and then we'll talk about what's going on behind the scenes. And so all of this is in the GitHub repo. So there's just the basic requirements here on adding Firebase and all of that. Um, the last one I uh, we didn't do in the last video, if you followed along on that one or if, or if you followed along with the link I put up above, uh, is to set the rules for Cloud Firestore because when this sign in with email happens or the sign up with email happens, it's going to create a user record in Firestore uh, and we need proper permissions to be able to write that. So I'm going to visit my uh, console here. I'm going to go to Cloud Firestore and first of all, I'm going to create a database and I am actually going to start in production mode. Select my region, enable. And while that's there, I'm going to copy from my GitHub instructions for when I get to security rules. So there's my blank database. I'm going to click on rules and I'm going to go ahead and edit the rules and Allow read write if the request.auth.uid is not equal null to null. So basically anybody has to be signed in already to actually write or read from the database. That's what I want uh, in this application. That'll also save you from getting an email at 4 p.m. every day that tells you that you have insecure rules. All right, that's one setup step, and that actually uh, just completes all of these basic setup here. And then I just have one requirement for email password authentication for this to go, uh, and that is to go to authentication. And uh, if we haven't gotten started, let's click get started. And we want to enable email and password authentication. So everything's disabled by default. We click edit. We enable. And we click save. And now if we send a request uh, to Firebase for email password, it should work. All right, so I'm gonna visit the app here. I'm gonna go to sign up with account and I'm gonna sign up with email and you can watch me type. So this is validating my input as it goes. I click sign up. I'm going to be asked for, this is my onboarding process. Uh, it's just a very simple onboarding process, but enough to give you the flow in the app. We're going to submit. It's going to tell me that it just sent a verification email to my email, which I will handle off screen. There it is. I'm going to click whoop, verify. And the way this is hooked up, it should be listening to changes uh, every five seconds it should be checking for changes and once it has been uh, verified it will take me to the welcome page so this is my successful login so all that is great let's talk about what the heck just happened there so the the videos that, that i've tended to watch and i've done one on email and password authentication uh this is really the login flow that you get you get your user your user is going to input their username uh, or their email and their password. It's going to go off to Firebase. If they have signed up in the past, uh, it's going to check that password, of course, and you will get a response as to whether this is the person that uh, signed up for that account or not. So they've been authenticated. That is uh, really, really a very simple case, and it doesn't represent what you encounter when you go to construct an actual app. 
Uh, so this is the login flow more or less that we just went through. So I signed up uh, for this app. So if I were to come back, so I log out and I go to sign in with email. All right, so the login flow that I just went through was this. When I typed my words in there, my email, my password, there was validation on that form. So uh, Firebase is not going to allow you. It's going to throw an error if you pass it a password that's less than six characters. It's going to throw an error if you give it an email address that is not uh, a validly constructed email address. It can be a fake email address as far as Firebase is concerned, but it has to have the at sign and a, and a domain name. Um, so that would kick back. So we want a form validation, and there is form validation in this app that is going to make sure that we don't even send it to Firebase if it doesn't meet those requirements. It's going to throw an error and say, yeah, it's, you know, it's not a valid password. It then went to authentication. So this is what happens in that more simplified flow. And all that told us is that whatever email I may have made up the first time and whatever password I may have made up the first time, when I came back and logged in, I was that same guy making up that same information. That doesn't tell you if that is a valid user in your app. Now, in Firebase, an email and password sign up, that tends to be a one-to-one -one ratio, but we want to be able to sub this authentication out later for Google authentication, Facebook authentication, uh, phone authentication. And so if we get back a response from Facebook that this person has a Facebook account, what is that to us, right? We need to know that they're authorized to use our app, that they have a user record, and so we're going to send them over to an authorization process and they may fail. It may throw an error and say, hey, you don't have an account. Did you mean to sign up? Or it may allow them through, sees, sees that they have an account and come to a decision point. So at this point, they may have uh, entered a, 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 a properly constructed email address, but we don't know that it's theirs. So we may want to send them to a verification process to verify their email like I did when I signed up. That is certainly going to be the case with a phone number. We're going to validate or verify that that actually is the user's phone number before we allow them to continue with our app. We may just want to send them right to onboarding from there. They may have signed in through Google, and we know Google has validated that that's a real account. Uh, so we don't need to verify, but we do want to send them to onboarding. Or we may want to send them to verification first, then to onboarding. Or we may just want to take them right to the home screen. They've been here before. They've been verified. They've been onboarded. They're going straight to home. So this is the complex web of logic that is going on when you log in uh, to an application. So over the next series of videos, what I'd like to do is step through how this application uh, handles each one of these steps. We'll just walk through the code. Um, this is not necessarily the one right way to do it. It is a way to do it, so I don't want to uh, come off as prescriptive uh, in this video, but what I'd like to give you uh, is a nice example that you can clone and use as a reference when you go to create your own application. So why don't we leave it there for this video, and in future videos we'll come back and start to look at the code in the repo that handles each one of these operations in the flow that we just talked about. So uh, that'll be going forward. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you down the road.